Right, last question, question 16. We're almost there. Uh, this is about light bulbs, uh, two different types. You've got the filament bulb and the uh, the energy saving fluorescent light bulb. So pretty straightforward this, I thought. A um, little bit of quantum, but mostly just electricity, DC electricity, which, we, which we've done in year 12. Anyway, right. So first part though is uh, explain uh, how it's, it's how, the, how the two different types of bulb work. What's the mechanism here? Okay, first up, filament bulb. Right, so this is how they work. Uh, obviously invented uh, over 100 years ago. Um, but basically you've got, a, uh, you've got a very, very thin, very long wire made of tungsten, a metal called tungsten. Now, the reason why we use tungsten is tungsten has a very high melting point for a metal. Okay, because this wire is going to get very, very hot when we pass a current through it. In fact, it's going to get so hot, it's going to glow white. Okay, the reason why it's inside a bulb, it has to be in a vacuum. No, it has to be in a vacuum because if there was oxygen next to the very, very, very hot tungsten wire, it would react with the oxygen and it would burn very quickly. Okay, so the tungsten is, 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 is in a vacuum and encased in the, in the glass bulb. Okay, right. So that's not what it's asking, though. It wants to know how how it works, how the wire gets hot when a PD, a potential difference, is applied. Right. So potentially, uh, always look at the, the marks. What have we got? It's only two marks here. So basically, if the potential difference is applied across the bulb, a current will flow through the filament. Now, if a current flows through the filament, electrons are going to collide with atoms or ions of tungsten in the lattice of the filament. It's as simple as that. So it's collision between electrons and the tungsten atoms, okay, which, which make the tungsten atoms or ions vibrate with a larger amplitude. Okay, so it's, it's, it's bigger vibrations. Bigger vibrations, obviously, is, 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 is what is noticed as an increase in temperature, okay? Right, the second one, the fluorescent bulb. Now, strip lights, fluorescent bulbs, these all have a bit of um, quantum going on inside them. It's all about energy levels. It's all about electrons being knocked up to higher energy levels and then dropping down to the ground state and releasing photons. Okay, now you've done this recently with spectra, which is part of the, the quantum physics topic that you've done recently. Okay, now basically you have the uh, the different energy levels, obviously, in it. There's two different types of atom here. Inside is mercury vapor, and on the outside of fluorescent bulbs, there's something called a, a, phos a phosphorus coating. Now, it's the phosphorus coating which is giving out loads of photons in the visible region, because mercury on its own does not glow very bright. OK, you get lots of transitions with mercury vapor, but a lot of them are in the UV or the infrared medium of the spectrum. So not you don't get much intensity of light from the visible, but you do with phosphorus. Phosphorus gives 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 much more photons uh, in the visible region. But anyway, if you were to draw your energy levels, OK, very crudely like this, and we have electrons in the ground state okay now it's 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 electrons passing through because you're applying a potential difference they're passing through the mercury vapor and it's collisions it's collisions between the the uh, the electrons are passing through and the electrons in the mercury atoms and they get knocked up to higher energy levels and then what do they do they drop back down and they drop back down and give out photons. So that's where the light comes from. If this is a mercury atom, these UV photons maybe will hit the phosphorus coating and the same process occurs, but we get visible photons. Okay, so that's how fluorescent light bulbs work. Next bit. Very straightforward, this. Um, it's, it's a resistivity calculation, um, which is a nice way to end an A-level exam. Uh, anyway, so what have we got? Let's write down the values, write down what we know. What do we know? So 
There we got. So length is six, not sixteen, one point six meters. Diameter is three point eight times ten to the minus five meters. The radius is half of that, which is one point five, one point seven. And cross-sectional area is pi r squared, which comes out as 1.134. 1.134 times 10 to the minus 9 meters squared. Okay, what's next? We have the uh, room temperature resistance. We need to figure out first. So um, the room temperature resistance, let's call it R naught. That's the resistivity times length over cross-sectional area. So what values have we got? We've got resistivity, which is 5.6 times 10 to the minus 8. That's the resistivity. We've got the length, which is 1.6. And it's all divided by our area, which we've calculated down the bottom there. Now that gives us a room temperature resistance of 79 ohms, isn't it? Okay. Now it does say when it's been used at maximum brightness, the resistance increases to a maximum of 14 times the resistance at room temperature. So the new resistance or the working resistance is 79 times 14, <clears throat> which is 1,106. 1,106 ohms, okay. And then finally, it wants the power. If we were going to have a resistance of, of 1106 ohms, what's going to be the power? Okay. I'll try that again. So we've got 1106 ohms. Which equation are we going to use? We don't know the current, but we do know the voltage. Now, one of the power equations, one of the three, is V squared over R. And that's what the one we're going to use. So 240 squared divided by 1106 is 52 watts. Okay, easy peasy. Last bit, last little question then. Filament bulbs are designed for the last to last thousands of hours of, of use, but they do blow, don't they? Now I don't know if you remember filament bulbs, but they're famous for blowing when. When do they suddenly stop working? Well, hopefully you remember that they they always seem to blow when you first switch them on. Now, uh, I've shown uh, I've shown you this as a demonstration with a data logger. Have an eye, and if you remember this in uh, F6 when I taught you, but if you when you first switch on a light bulb, a filament light bulb, if you were to plot current against time for a filament bulb, what do you see? You see that big current spike at the start, don't you? And then it drops down. And to its normal working current. Can anyone remember why we get that big spike in current? Why do we get that huge current at the start? Okay, any ideas? If you remember, hopefully it's because room temperature resistance is low, isn't it? It's very, very low. So if it's very low, this 240 volts is going to produce a big current. Now, as it heats up, Resistance increases. Don't forget, resistance is going to increase up to 1,106. So the current will then drop to its constant value. 
okay and that's really why they blow when you first switch them on now we can show this or we can prove this mathematically we want to look at the, the three power equations okay first one let's have a look p equals i v <clears throat> right well v is constant but if we get a big current at the start then we're getting a big a, a large amount of power a large amount of power delivered in the filament which is going to be a, a large amount of heat energy produced okay if you get a large amount of heat energy per second deliver delivered it's more likely to blow isn't it so it's all about the amount it's the power if this power is high in the bulb it's most likely to blow it's more, because it's going to heat up much more much more quickly because don't forget this power in a filament bulb wh where does this power go where does this energy per second go it goes into one thing and that is heating the filament if this is high it's much more likely to blow okay we could look at the other equations we've got p equals i squared r we could we could uh, discuss this one okay now again when the resist when we first switched on the resistance admittedly yeah the resistance is low so you think or oh, maybe the power will be low but no if resistance is low current is high now because we're squaring the current this is a much more significant factor than r so the power again is much higher when we first switch it on and then finally, we could use the third equation, which is V squared over R. So again, we've got V is constant, 240 volts. If we have a small current when we first, small resistance when we first switch it on, we're going to have a big power, aren't we? So if we look at each of these three equations, we will see a small resistance at the start will lead to a large amount of power. Large amount of power, a large amount of heat per second dissipated in the filament, so it's more likely to blow. Right, there you have it. That's paper one. Hopefully some or all of that made sense. Um, let's look forward to paper two. Let's see what that has. Thank you very much. Bye.